Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part one of .NET Basics. In this session, we'll understand how a .NET program executes. And to understand this better, we will compare a pre-.NET program execution with .NET program execution. Now, even before .NET came into existence, we were developing applications using programming languages like VB6, C++, etc. Okay. Now, when I use VB6 and develop a, an application, you know, let's say a pre.NET application, and compile that using the language compiler, we know that an assembly gets generated. And by the way, assemblies have an extension of .dll or .exe depending on the type of application that we are creating, which we'll talk about in a bit. Now, so this assembly is in native code or a machine code format. Why in the first place do we need to compile an application? Because the operating system can only understand zeros and ones. They can't understand high level programming languages like C, C++, C Sharp, etc. They are meant to be used by programmers. So programmers use these high level languages. They develop the application. But whereas your underlying, you know, your computer systems can only understand zeros and ones. So if your program has to execute on top of that operating system, somebody in between has to convert that high level programming language into zeros and ones, which is nothing but the machine code, which that underlying operating system can understand. And to do that, we take the help of compilers because it's practically impossible for human beings to code using zeros and ones. That's why we have these high level programming languages. Okay, so the problem with this style of application execution is that this application now, no, look at this, I have a VB6 application, a program, I compile that, I have this assembly generated. Basically, we deploy the assembly onto a system to get executed. Okay, so this assembly is a native code, meaning this code, this machine code that is generated is native to that operating system upon which this application is compiled. If I take this program and try to run it on another operating system, for example, in this example, let's say this is Windows operating system. Now, if I take this assembly, which is compiled on this Windows operating system, and if I try to run it on a Linux or a Unix operating system, it will fail to run. Why? Because this code, this machine level code, is native to that operating system upon which it is compiled. Okay, that's the reason why it's called as native code. And some people also call it as object code. All right, so that's the problem with you know, pre.NET applications, the applications are not portable. Now let, let's look at how a .NET application executes. Okay, now with .NET, you have the choice, you know, to pick your programming language. Okay, .NET supports several programming languages like C Sharp, VB, C++, and J Sharp out of the box, but there are several other languages as well. Okay, if we have a compiler implemented within .NET, you can use any programming language. That's why I have this others box here. Okay, but these four, C Sharp, VB, C++, and J Sharp are the common .NET languages that are being used today. So when I use any of these programming language and develop a .NET application, and then when I compile a .NET application, okay, we get an assembly here as well. But this assembly does not contain native code. Instead, it contains intermediate language. So, okay, that is the difference between a .NET assembly and a pre.NET assembly. Okay, before .NET, you know, the, the assemblies are in native code format, but with .NET, the assemblies are in intermediate language format. But keep in mind, the operating systems can, you know, understand only zeros and ones. So if you run this assembly directly on top of the operating system, will the operating system understand that? No, it will not, and it will fail to run. That's why there has to be somebody in between who will convert this intermediate language into native code, which this operating system can understand, and who will do the job for us, the runtime environment called CLR common language runtime environment. And how did the CLR come on this machine? Now, when I install .NET on a computer, there are two important components that gets installed. Okay, one is the .NET framework class library, and the other one is the CLR, the runtime environment, common language runtime. Okay, so this CLR 
is the heart of .NET program execution. So when the program tries to run, we know that intermediate language cannot be understood by the operating system. So this assembly actually, you know, it doesn't run directly on top of the operating system. Okay, there is a layer in between called CLR. Okay, within the CLR, this assembly tries to execute. And within that CLR, we have another important component called JIT compiler, which takes in intermediate language as the input and emits native code. It generates native code. And this code can be understood by this operating system. Okay, so if you look at this, within .NET program execution, we have two steps. One, from source code to intermediate language, done by the respective language compiler. Okay, from source code to intermediate language, done by the respective language compiler. And then step two, intermediate language is converted into native code by the JIT compiler. And this JIT compiler is residing on CLR. And what is CLR? CLR is the runtime environment for .NET applications. And how did it get in there? When I install .NET Frame, I mean .NET on a computer, we have two important components gets automatically installed. One is the framework class library, and the other one is the runtime environment. OK, now, what is the advantage of executing a program like this, the number one advantage is portability. Now let's assume this operating system is Windows. So on top of this Windows operating system, I have CLR. So obviously, when this program executes, the CLR on, on top of this Windows operating system will take that intermediate language. Okay, At the time the program is executing, the JIT compiler will convert that intermediate language into native code, which this underlying Windows operating system can understand. Okay, and along the same lines, let's say for example, I have Unix operating system. If this operating system is Unix, then we have a runtime environment that is installed on that operating system which is suitable for Unix, which will convert the intermediate language into native code which the underlying Unix operating system can understand. So what I mean to say here is, as long as the platform has the CLR implemented, on any of those platforms, your .NET program can run, okay? Because the CLR, the JIT compiler within the CLR on top of that platform will take up the responsibility of converting intermediate language into native code, which that underlying operating system can understand. So this way, .NET applications are portable from one platform to another platform. So this is like this virtual environment which is providing us with that capability. Not only application portability, another very important feature provided by CLR is garbage collection. Now, if you are from a VB6 or a C++ background, you know, usually when we are developing applications, let's say, for example, I have a customer class, I create an instance of that customer class. So what happens? Memory gets allocated to that object. Now, after I am done using that object, as a programmer, I, resp I am responsible for deallocating the memory for that object. Otherwise, what happens? You know, memory overflow exceptions because you didn't clean the object, the objects tend to remain in memory. At some point, the application is going to break. Okay, and often, you know, novice developers tend to forget cleaning up memory. Okay, which will, which will present us with hard to detect runtime errors or memory overflow exceptions, etc. Okay, but whereas with .NET, you don't have that headache anymore. Okay. You as a programmer create objects, use them and forget about it. Who is going to clean those objects afterwards? Garbage collection. Okay. Your runtime environment has another important component called garbage collector, which will clean the objects that are not in use. We as programmers are not responsible for memory management, but, but, but before .NET, we were responsible for memory management. And we often used to forget and present us with this memory exceptions. But with .NET, we don't have that problem anymore right now. Okay. So if you look at CLR, two very important advantages that we have discussed so far. One is portability, application portability. And the other one is automatic memory management, which is also called as garbage collection. Besides these two, there are several other benefits as well, which we'll be talking about in a later session. So there are a few points that we need to recap. You know, uh, So we know that when we compile a .NET application, intermediate language is generated. And different people call it with different names. You know, some people call it as MSIL, standing for Microsoft Intermediate Language. Some people call it as SIL, C-I-L, Common Intermediate Language. 
okay and it is also often referred to as managed code why do we call intermediate language as managed code look at this here who is managing how this program runs your CLR okay so this intermediate language which is the bright product of compiling a dotnet application so this intermediate language runs inside the CLR and your CLR manages how this application runs within that virtual environment okay it provides memory management for example okay that's why your CLR is managing that intermediate language and hence it's called as managed code so it's also called as managed code and on the other hand here we don't have any kind of environment here in a pre.net application this code directly runs on top of the operating system okay so there's no one managing those objects there we as programmers are responsible for that okay so this native code is also called as unmanaged code whereas intermediate language is called as managed code okay and we have seen assemblies have an extension of .dll or .exe depending on the type of the application for example if you look at this very simple solution that I have here it has got one project called introduction to C sharp and this is a console application so if I right click that solution and then build solution and then if I right click on the project and say open folder in Windows Explorer now when I say build what happens the source code in this program gets compiled into an assembly so when I open this folder by right click on that and say open folder in Windows Explorer and if I get into the bin debug directory you see there a dot exe this is nothing but the assembly okay so since this is a console application I get a dot exe but on the other hand I can also add another new project and if you look at this in this console application we are using C sharp programming language now I can also develop another project in the same solution and I can choose a programming language of my choice for example I want to develop a visual basic program I can do that instead of visual C sharp I will choose visual basic and then let's say I am developing a class library project and click OK now you look at this it's a VB project so it's possible within dotnet you can use different programming languages and now when I build this solution and if I right click on this class library project and say open folder in Windows Explorer and if I get into the bin directory and then debug look at this we get a dot DLL so basically the point I'm trying to prove here is that depending on the type of the application you cre you're creating you get a dot DLL or a dot exe but they are nothing but assemblies both of them for example if I create a Windows application I get another dot exe but whereas when I create a web application I get a dot DLL okay irrespective of whether it is a dot DLL or a dot exe both of them will be in intermediate language format if it is a dot net application but whereas pre dot net a VB6 or a C++ application before dot net when you compile that you still used to get an assembly which is nothing but dot dll or dot exe but those assemblies are in native code format whereas dot net assemblies are in intermediate language format okay so dot net assemblies contain IL whereas pre dot net assemblies contains native code which is also called as machine code or unmanaged code and the dot net application basic uh, execution consists of two steps okay one is the compilation itself source code to intermediate language and from intermediate language to native code platform specific native code and who does that JIT compiler and where is the JIT compiler present it's present in the CLR and what is CLR called as it's the dotnet runtime environment so dotnet runtime environment provides several benefits garbage collection is one of them application portability is another advantage you know besides these two we have several other advantages as well which we'll be talking about in a later session and dotnet supports different programming languages which we have seen c sharp vb j sharp and c++ so if you look at dotnet you know c sharp vb c++ and j sharp now except C++, J sharp, VB and C sharp you know they can only generate managed code but whereas C++ can generate both managed as well as unmanaged code meaning native as well as uh, intermediate language why have they given this flexibility for C++ because before .NET there were several applications that were developed 
in C++ for backward compatibility you know from .NET applications to pre .NET applications they have provided us with this flexibility so if there is ever a need for your .NET application to generate native code then C++ is the programming language that we have to be using okay and another important thing to keep in mind is that um, when you basically run a dotnet application okay we know that this intermediate language now if you look at this the assembly for example if you take this project if i open the folder in windows explorer go into the bin if you look at this assembly we know that a dotnet assembly contains intermediate language okay so this assembly contains intermediate language when i run this program what happens this intermediate language within this assembly is converted into native code by the CLR so where is that native code stored it is stored in memory for the lifetime of the execution of your application but when you close your program what happens to this native code is it stored anywhere no it is just thrown away okay so when I run my program again what's gonna happen this assembly will be loaded into CLR and the JIT compiler will convert the intermediate language into the native code and then the program gets executed so every time you run a program you know it has to convert the intermediate language into native code so obviously we have seen the advantages of this two-step execution model or this virtual environment execution model within .NET but what, are th what is the disadvantage? The disadvantage is when you first run a .NET application because of this extra step compilation of intermediate language into native code okay will take a little time and that's almost negligible so when you run a .NET application first time it might be a little slow but as you continue to use it, it it will be faster but the first use it will be a little slow why because there is that extra step of JIT compilation just in time compilation okay now this kind of a program execution model is actually very much similar to Java if you are a Java programmer then you might be you know you are already aware for Java the runtime environment is called as JVM Java virtual machine okay and instead of intermediate language in Java we have bytecode so when you compile a Java application what happens bytecodes are generated and those bytecodes run on top of the JVM Java virtual machine which will convert the bytecodes into native code which the underlying operating system can understand so in .NET we are essentially following the same approach the virtual execution model all right on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.